morning. I'm uh, Jim Armstrong, and uh, what we are going to do today is to do a screen and then a clean of the pulp fiber. So in our previous video, we went through and we uh, mixed up liquor. We uh, measured out the weight of our chips. We measured moisture content in the chips. Then we loaded the chips into the digester. We metered liquor into the digester. Uh, the chips were cooked over about a three and a half hour period. And then finally we blew the cook, uh, blew the chips out of the digester into the bowl tank. Then we transferred it over to uh, stock tank number three. And then the second step was to actually take the stock in stock tank number three and uh, run it through a brown stock washer. And we wash all of the liquor out of the pulp stock itself. And the very last thing we did was we actually measured the consistency of it and calculated the yield. That was how much uh, fiber had actually been produced. So now the next stage is to clean out the shies, the, the little chunks that are sitting left in the um, uh, pulp fiber itself, little bits that didn't get cooked. And an example of that, I remember way back when, when I was in grade school, they used to give us something called full scat, which we would, in this day and age, probably call it legal paper, legal size paper. And uh, you would, it was kind of neat, because you look at this piece of paper, and there would be little tiny specks of wood still in the paper, cheap paper. Um, and that, had been, that paper had been made with unscreened stock. So we're going to take it through the screening stage, where we're going to filter out all of that paper, all of that uh, fiber, and the uh, solids are going to stay behind. And Charles, I'm just going to move over to the screen itself. So if you follow me over here. So I've got a couple of spare screens in my hand, and you can see that this one's got smaller holes in it. This one's got larger holes in it. And the one that is actually installed over here in the centrifugal screen has got even larger holes still. And so the screen is sitting in here, if I get my laser out. Uh, the, the screen is inside. And uh, there's a rotary um, um, blade that's going to move around there, four point blade. And I'm going to just for a few seconds turn this thing on. It's going to make a racket, but you should be able to see the blade moving. Okay, so again, this is the screen. There's medium-sized holes in here. And then, I have Charles, if you can kind of get a picture right about where my finger is pointing in there, getting close on it, you can see that this one's got even larger holes. And if you come back a little bit, Charles, the screen is actually sitting jammed in there like, like that, okay? What will happen is that when this thing is spinning, it's going to push the accepts, the fiber, through the actual holes and the fiber will go down through here into that stock tank. Any big chunks are going to be stuck behind the screen and they will come out through this line here. We're going to apply some flushing water on and the flushing water will go in there and flush, hopefully, those chunks out. Sometimes this is kind of small in diameter and so sometimes it plugs up on us. But you'll see this when it's actually running just before we shut this off, I'm going to turn on the screen right now. It's noisy, but you will be able to see the blade actually uh, moving. There, it's spinning. You can imagine this thing spinning around and it's just shoving stuff out of the holes. But the big chunks are stuck behind and we'll wash them out. Okay, so we're back now at the operator screen and I don't know how well my mouse is going to show up, but uh, we're taking pulp stock out of stock tank number two. This is the washed stock. I'm going to pump it through that stock pump number one and it goes up and it comes into the screen itself. It actually gets pushed in from behind. Okay, we're uh, going to take this cover off of the screen so that you can actually see what's going on. We've taken all the other screws out and I'm just going to take this last one off. Like that. 
hopefully not drop it. Okay, so I've loosened off the, the bottom rubber sleeve that's going down there. I'm going to take this guy off. In industry, they would not be made of plexiglass. This is for demonstration purposes. And they'd be significantly larger than this. This is the screen, and I'm going to remove the screen now. So now you can see the size of the holes in there. Now, what I want you to see is that the stock that was coming in comes down through this line, and right about in here, it goes into this into this back section. And then the stock actually comes out through these little openings here, and remember that the sleeve is all the way around there, so the stock is coming into this center area. These guys are going to spin, and they're going to push the stock out through the holes, and the rejects are going to be stuck in the middle here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this gasket off just because it's falling right now. And I'm going to go and start this centrifugal screen up because I want you to see these blades do not move. They're just stationary and they're in there as a distributor. In fact, if we wanted to, we could actually we could loosen off these um, screws in here. This front plate clamps it and you can actually change the angle on them so that you can get more coming in. So I'm going to go start it up right now. I'm going to throw the disconnect on. And when I start this up, we're going to keep our fingers away from here because it could hurt. And now I'm going to turn it on. And now you can see that the blades are staying stationary. The distributor blades and the actual blades on the um, arms themselves just sweep the stock around their boot. So now you've got a fair idea of how that works. Distributor pushes the stock into this uh, center area in here. The, so the stock is all fed and comes into this middle area. We're going to put flushing water and we're going to control the temperature of that around 50 degrees C. So there'll be some warm water mixing with some cold water to actually make uh, water at about 50. This is actually really as hot a water as we can get, and then we control it down to 40 degrees C. So the flush water is going to go in there. The chunks that get stuck in behind the screen, that is what won't pass through the screen, are going to go out as rejects, and we'll see them down below. And then the accepts, that is the good fiber, um, without the big chunks, is going to come down into the screen tank. It's a pretty basic and simple process. Okay. All right, the next thing we need to do is we need to take a sample of the wash stock, and, and uh, we normally do about three samples of this to figure out what is the consistency, and then we're also going to dry it out, uh, not only figuring out the consistency, but we're going to try and figure out how much um, rejects are actually sitting in here. And so I'm going to reach down into the tank and uh, take a sample. I've got a representative sample, and uh, there are some, uh, you can actually see, if I turn this around, you can actually see one of those little chunks that I'm talking about in there is floating around, and the screen is going to take those out. Okay, okay so we're going to take uh, some consistency tests, and Charles, if you can just get a picture of those three beakers that are sitting over there. Uh, they're approximately a uh, thousand milliliters each and uh, what we're going to do and this is standard procedure we're going to take and we're going to measure the weight of this filter paper uh, on a scale then we're going to measure the weight of the slurry then we're going to measure the weight of the beaker and once we've got all of that we'll put it into this truck or funnel pull, uh, pull the slurry in pull vacuum on it and take the water up. Then we'll take a pad, put it into an oven, and, and dry it out. Okay, so I'm here with the, with the filter paper. Uh, somebody has already written some weights on here, but they got them wrong. 
the, uh, the scale, I'm going to tear that out. Okay, so it's going back to zero. So that scale is zero now. It's measuring it at 2.5, 859, 2.60, call it 2.60. So this is 2.60 equals the filter. I'll put that, and you make darn sure when you do this that you put this with the writing on the downside um, in there. Anyway, we're going to take a sample, one of these samples. I'm going to drive a tape off of this thing. And the slurry plus the beaker on this first sample came in at 1,183.8. I'm not going to worry about that extra decimal on there. And so now I'm going to take this sample. Uh, this was beaker plus slurry equals, what did I just say? I wrote it down. 1,183.8. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this filter paper. Come over here, Charles. You can get a view of this. Filter paper is going to go in there, somewhat close to center. And then I'm going to take the slurry. And I'm going to pour that in here. Turn on the vacuum. You can see it sucking the water out of there. I'm going to actually get some fresh water in here and rinse around in there. It doesn't matter how much water I add because we're going to suck it all out. So it's not really part of the calculation. This is actually looking pretty good. Trying to wash it off the edges so nothing gets stuck. Charles, if you can take a shot of that, you can see how that water, you can see it being sucked right out of there. Okay, it's pretty well done. My fingernail and Peel back. Filter. Ooh. Looks like it leaked around the edge. Shouldn't have happened. We're going to do three of these anyway, so it'll average. But the, what happened was that the fiber got in underneath there. And this is a hot plate. I got something with that I was supposed to write on the back of that 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 was number one. I'll, remember. I'll write it on the other two that they're number two and number three. So we're going to do it again. Number two, the filter is going to be equal to get that out. two point four nine. Thousand 
1,167.6 grams, and that's the slurry plus beaker. What did I do with that other beet or slurry? Okay, um, one thing I needed to do was to take this other beaker, weigh it, just the beaker, So the beaker was 309.9. Now, this is beaker plus slurry. Pulling is fast, this one. Yeah. Okay. I probably should have drained some of that water out, which I will in a few minutes. This guy's taking a little bit longer. I'm holding it down is to make sure it gets good vacuum because it can leak around these seals here. So this is our second sample and you can see that it came off a little bit better. There's very, very little left in here. I didn't flush it this time because it washed underneath the filter. These these filter papers are just a little bit large for this. You got to make sure you center them up as much as possible. Anyway, this is number two, and I think I have a number written on the back side. It's number two, the filter paper, the filter plus the slurry, and I will get the weight of that beaker in a moment. So that's going to go in there. Sample number two. This is going to be sample number three. And uh, this is my beaker. Make sure it's good and dry. Tear out the scale. And number two beaker. We. Three hundred and one, three hundred and one. Okay. okay, so the next thing we need to do is that uh, we need to figure out what the weight of the of the shies are in here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take three more samples, 
Some were going down to a flat screen, we're going to vibrate the flat screen, read sample, and collect uh, what um, chunks are left behind, what shives are left behind. The flat screen will actually suck all of the fiber through and get rid of it, and leave us with the rejects. And so then we'll put those on trays, what rejects we collect, and we'll put them in an oven and we'll dry them to see how many grams of bone dry shives there were. So we won't get that information until tomorrow. Um, and then we're going to go through this same process with the, with the screen stock. And we will see how much fiber was in there, we figure out the consistency, so we figure out how much fiber we got, and then also we will see how many rejects are left in that, and it should be significantly less. Okay, I'm going to take the sample out, I'm going to do three of these. Okay, so we're going to go to the flat screen with our three samples. Um, you can see if you look in here, there's little slices, this is called the number 10 flat screen. And then the flat screen itself, you look underneath, there's going to be a little offset cam in here which is going to vibrate it. I'm going to turn it on right now. And all that's doing is that it's pulling on here. It's a diaphragm. It's going to try and suck it down. And so it'll, you can see what's happening here with the little air bubbles and stuff. And I'm going to take this one thousand liters of stock and now you can hear it sucking it. suck all the fiber through, so you got to have this diluted down pretty good. This will take it a while to do that. see the consistency is going down in here so it's actually pulling fiber out and the water is going out there. Okay, so I went upstairs and I picked up three trays like this and I measured them and they're, they don't they don't weigh very much. This one's 1.0233 grams. Um, what I'm going to do now is you'll see that the fiber is is all gone out of here and all that's left are those tiny little bits right there. So I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to collect those guys and put them in that tray. I think that's, nope, I still got a little bit there. Okay, so it's not very darn much. And now what we got to do is we got to go and put this in an oven and dry it out to find out the amount of dried fiber in that 1,000 liter um, sample. Okay, and I've got two more to do so we, we'll get the average of it. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do here, we've got these little trays and we've collected the debris that came off of the number 10 flat screen uh, from a given sample and now we're going to measure it wet and so I'm going to put it on this scale, it's fairly sensitive, it's so sensitive that you really need to treat, close that door so there's no air drafts or no anything going across and that is now showing one point 0295, 1.21, yeah, 1.21000, and it's, you can see how it's bouncing around, because it's uh, 
we're measuring fractions of a gram. And in fact, the, the tray itself weighed 1.0233. So we're only looking at uh, 0.1 grams for the weight of that fiber that's on there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut this guy off. And we will take this over and we can each grab one of those. Over to the oven. And then and we will let them dry out for a day. Twenty four hours. And that's the All right, we're just about ready to start up the uh, the centrifugal screen. And the uh, graphic of that thing <coughs> looks like that. And I described already what's going on in here. So now the first thing we need to do is to get this water temperature working, getting the flushing water working through here. And right now, we've simply opened the drain at the bottom of that tank, and we'll get that all set up and get it running before we begin to bring any stock over here. So the controls for that are the same controls that we use for the washer. So I'm going to go into washer controls. And as we mentioned before, this is running a total warm water flow and a cold water part flow. So this is actually a part to total ratio control. The temperature controller actually set points the ratio, FFIC89, which is really just a multiplier. So if I start up, and I'm going to start up on manual, I'm going to manually open up the valve to 50%. So this valve is going to go to 50. And when it does, you might hear in the background water dribbling down through the tank. You can see the flow going up. I've got a set point of about 14 liters a minute set on there for lots of flushing flow. I'm going to put this controller onto automatic now. So I've selected it. It just goes to automatic. And now it's going to open up this control valve more and more and more and eventually get up to that 14 meters a minute. Now, we're putting in hot water. So if you look over here, you can see the temperature starting to climb. It's 50 degrees, go 51, 52, and I want to get it uh, down to 50. So to that, I'm going to add some cold water. So I'm going to go to this controller, which is the cold water flow control. And I'm going to set that guy's output to 50%. They're very small valves. And I'm now starting to get some water coming in. The ratio I've got it set manually for 0.25. So it's going to take uh, the flow, the total flow of 13.3, multiply it by 0.25 or one quarter, and that will actually make an output of 3.3 .3 liters a minute, which becomes the set point to this guy over here. So I'm now going to take this cold water flow and put it into automatic. And it's going to open up its valve and bring itself up to set point. And hopefully that's going to start pulling this temperature down. You can see the temperature is now up at 55.7. And uh, as we begin to add more cold water to it, then what should happen is that temperature should drop down. Um, and we're running at our, well, it's 13.59 liters, but it's going to work its way up to 14. Uh, temperature is on its way down now. Once we get close to 50 degrees, then I'll put this ratio control or temperature controller on automatic control, and it will adjust the ratio up and down, which will add more cold if, in fact, the temperature is high or less cold if the temperature is too low, below the set point value. Okay, so the next thing to do is to go to the screen overview. And you'll see now that I've got 51.4 degrees C, water at 14 and a half liters a minute going in, and my little animation here shows that there is water going into the center of the screen. So our next step after this is we're actually going to start the pump up, run stock through the screen. We've got to get the screen rotating. 
and I earlier in this video I actually turned that on so you were able to see it. And then once we get some stock coming through there, we'll make sure the drain is closed below, and uh, then we go through the screen. Okay. Okay. So we're over at the center screen, and this is the uh, warm water that's coming in on this hose. And you can see the, the jet, there's actually two jets deep in there. There's one jet, another one behind it, and there's four in the front. So there's eight jets of water going in. It'll flush the rejects down this line, and of course the rest of the water is going right through the screen, so it's going down into the bottom of, of the screen stock tank, which right now we're draining the sewer because we don't want to fill that tank up with water. Okay. Okay, so what we've done now is we've got the agitator in number two stock tank agitating the wash stock and then we're going to pump it from here over to the central thing. So let's uh, we'll go around here. So through a whole rigmarole of piping in here, eventually the stock is coming around to this line, see my arrow on the line, and through and goes into the back of the screen. In the back of the screen, there's a distributor, so it's going to take the stock and spin it into the center of the stock. So, are you closed down there? Okay, I'm going to start up uh, number one stock pump. I'm going to start it now. center section, the good stock, you can see it going through the holes, drops down, rejects are ending up coming out on this line here. And there's our green stock starting to accumulate in that tank. The number two stock tank is going to go down, number three stock tank is going to go up. Okay. Now you can see how the stock is kind of building up in here. Rock is going through that screen and because of uh, this uh, impeller in there. And you can also see, I can see a little bit sides and I can see the sides going down there. You can see sides. These are some of the rejects. These are really big ones. But in general, See the little chunks of wood floating in there? Now some of our good fiber went through there as well. You we probably could get away with a little bit larger screen. But you can certainly see there's a lot of rejects sitting inside there. Okay, okay we, said, we said a few moments ago we were going to take the cover off and so what we're going to do is that we need to lock out that screen so okay, we'll go around the other side can't see what I'm doing tag on there but normally I would do that. Now we're going to go over the screen. We under all the bolts that are holding it in place like that. Remember that's how it was. We took the rejects line out. Now the screen cover is going to come off. The screen itself 
is right there. You see, we still got a little bit of reject stuck in here. So the stock was coming in. If you look at the back here, those veins that are sitting in there is the distributor. So the pulp stock comes down, goes into that chamber behind, and then comes out on each one of these veins. And then this is the actual blade that is spinning when the motor is driving. Okay, so we've got the, the centrifugal screen in, out right now, and we'll leave it out. We've got it locked out. But down in the tank now, you can see the wash or the screen stock. And uh, I'm going to take a sample of that because we have to run some tests on that. And when I pull that, you look at it, and just from the look of it, there's hardly any reject sitting in there, if anything. Okay, and we're going to get three of these. Okay, so we've gone through the centrifugal screen, and I've got three beakers over here. Which this one is the rejects. You can see that there's a lot of shives in these guys. There's some some big guys floating around in there, and there's some big ones in here as I bring it around. But there's also a lot of pulp fiber in there. And this screen isn't set up quite right. Uh, appreciate that when we're dealing with something as small as we're dealing with here compared to what's in industry, um, we don't have a lot of lot of selection. Uh, if anything. Uh, the screen holes need to be a little bit larger so that the pulp fiber can get through some because some of it was getting stuck with the rejects and the flushing water on there was washing out fiber before it got a chance to get through those holes so maybe the next run we'll actually take and lower the, the flushing rate down I had it at 14 before we run it at 15 I may even try to go down to 10 the next time we run one of these things just to slow the flushing rate down the reason we're running a high flushing rate was that we were getting plugged up with shives inside uh, the line and, and we couldn't get the rejects out when we ran before. Anyway, moving on. Accents look significantly better. I'm just going to mix it a little bit so you can see what it looks like. And I don't see any chunks in there. And I look at this guy. And again, I don't see any chunks in there. And I look at this guy and it's much the same. Uh, there's a one little tiny one over there. So what we have to do now is we have to figure out what our rejects rate was. And our rejects rate is going to be higher than what it should be because you can see here that we've taken out some fiber along with the actual rejects themselves. So we're going to do a consistency test on these three and then average it out. And then on the calculation, we will figure out based on the amount of fiber that we had going into the washer, our screen, I'm sorry, and the amount of fiber that was coming back out of the screen uh, as to what our reject ratio was. And that'll be all this stuff. And as I say, it's going to appear a little bit high. Okay. Okay, so we have done the screening. We've actually ran a consistency test on these guys, and that's uh, in the dryer right now drying, so that we can figure out how much stock how much fiber, how much bone dry fiber did we get after screening and how much bone dry fiber did we have before screening? The rejects will be whatever the difference is between those two. Um, again, unfortunately, our screen uh, isn't quite right in size and uh, so we're going to get a rather high reject rate because we rejected some pulp fiber as well. Now, if you look in this tank, he is now empty. Because what I did was I took all the stock that was here and I pumped it back over to stock tank number two, which is over here. So stock tank number two, turn on the agitator. You should see a cloud of fiber coming up here. And now you don't see hardly any rejects floating around in there. Pretty, pretty clean stock. So the next thing we've got to do is start up a different stock pump and then pump this stuff to the cleaners. The first part is to actually get it running and it's going to uh, relieve pressure, what we call letdown control. It's noisy, it's just sucking air in there. Um, and so there's a control valve which is sitting just back here behind me and if I put my laser on it and it's probably to get it. And that valve is taking the discharge of the pump and pumping it back to here so that we maintain a pressure of around 40, 45 PSI. 
and that'll be sufficient supply pressure to go into the cleaners and then on the cleaners all the way around here the pump will be pumping up here and there's the pressure transmitter that we measure the the supply stock with it comes along here and there are three lines that we could open to the cleaners. I got a little extra here because this particular cleaner has never worked, whereas these two don't work too badly at all. So we will probably go on one and maybe go on two. It won't take very long. The stock comes in to the top here, just at the back, and I don't, Charles, know whether you can catch where they're, where they're coming in, but it's coming in here, here, and here. And it comes in on a, on a tangent, so Charles, if you can get over here, maybe they can see the tangent right there. So it's not going into the center of this thing, it's actually coming into the side of it. That gets it spinning. And then what happens is that the, the heavies, the sand that is actually in the fiber, because we still got that. Remember that the tree was drawing nutrient out of the ground, and as it drew the water, it also drew up some sand with it. Depending on the species, it can draw more or less. And uh, what we're trying to do is get rid of that sand. So the sand will go down and it'll come out the bottom here as a reject. And later, once we get going, and this thing doesn't run for very long, it's quite quick. Um, I'll put my hand under there and, and you could actually feel the grit, okay, from the sand. The accepts come up the top. And they'll go up onto this line here. So depending on whether we're running two or one, I'll probably start with this one and, and bring that one in. Um, the stock comes back along through here and drops into here. We have to keep a fat pressure on these things to work. So you've got supply pressure coming in at around 40, 42 PSI. The back pressure, as I remember, we run that somewhere around uh, 10 PSI. So you get about a 30, 32 pound pressure drop. Um, and we had looked at the whole idea of putting a valve on there to actually control that automated, but the process was over so fast that it didn't make sense. Um, the, uh, what we would do is we would measure differential pressure, and we would control the differential pressure to maintain a 30 PSID differential across the actual uh, cleaners themselves. So if the cleaners will hydraulically function properly. If you don't have that differential across them, they don't, uh, they don't work correct. The stock will then go back into this tank, and once it's in here, it has basically now been cooked, washed, streamed, and cleaned. And uh, the next place it would go in a mill is, uh, well, it could be finished product. It could be going to a paper machine that is making uh, corrugated paper, uh, or making brown paper, or making materials for brown paper bags. Uh, it could be going to a bleach plant where we're going to bleach it and we could uh, bleach it with a four or five stage bleach plant depending on how much brightness we want, how bright we want it to be. And if you remember from the PowerPoint at the very beginning, uh, we're looking for, for removing all the lignans that we can out of there if we're going to use this for printing on. If we're not going to use it for printing on, then we would just use brown stock. Okay? So that's basically it. Okay, so back at the operating screen, I'm going to now pick on a cleaner overview. And this will give you a better idea of what's going on. I kind of changed the color of my stock in there from the browny color that you saw before to, to a red. But I couldn't make it white in there because it's not. It's, it's, it is brown stock. Uh, but it's much lighter. At any rate, the pump number two that we're going to use will discharge its pressure and we'll maintain a constant differential pressure in there of uh, control. We're going to maintain a, a pressure, the supply pressure, at 300 kilopascals if we can. Uh, we have had issues with the pumps, and we may have to bring a second pump in there to, uh, to help us a little bit. Uh, but we're going to try and maintain a 300 kilopascal, which is the 40 PSI or 42 PSI uh, supply pressure. And to do that, we are doing that with this letdown control valve, the valve that I described. So once we got that pressure up, we then go into our cleaners. Um, 
in a real mill, we actually had pressure transmitters on every single one of those things, special little diaphragm transmitters uh, that would, would read back to us. So the operators could see how well the cleaners were functioning and tell when a cleaner plugged up or didn't plug up because in fact, if the rejects plugs in here, you'll go right up to supply pressure. Um, so uh, we're feeding our feet in and I tried to show that tangentially coming in. The accepts are coming up this way. And again, back pressure on the accepts is gonna run somewhere around 10 PSI, which is gonna be around uh, 80 kPa, somewhere in that vicinity. And then we discharge down. We're gonna use this little valve in here to, to throttle that. The rejects are collected in a rejects box. And when we were over there, we saw the shape of the cleaners, I think, and we saw the little box down at the bottom. And so then that also bleeds back out into the screen box. And we need to go and check and make sure that that line is open. Okay, so we're gonna try and start up number stock pump number two. We've been using number one for everything so far. Stock pump number two is right here. Um, I wanna look at the pressure control and make sure that uh, I've got my valve partly open. Also, uh, interesting enough, uh, when we rebooted the computer, and, and this happens, all of the motor controls go to auto mode, and it really needs to be in manual mode so that we can operate it. So I'm going to switch that one to manual, and this one to manual, and this one to manual. We're only using this pump. So the pressure control, uh, which is TB101. Uh, pump. These are the pumps. Let's go to uh, clear control. And uh, this is the feed pressure, 101, and it's set at 300. And I've got the valve at 36% open right now. So that's, that's, that's probably good. So we'll go to the pumps and hope that number two stock pump works for us. Noisy thing. Stop out. You see I got 98 kPa on there. Uh, number three stock pump. I'm trying to remember which one is the uh, noisier of the two. That's a better one. The US Very Drive is the one on number two and it, it's got a belt driven thing and it makes a lot of noise. Pressure is only coming up to 38 kilopascals and right there so and I wanted to get it up to 300. We've had issues with these and we have to run both pumps. Uh, so I'm going to go back to screen control and I'm going to put this guy down to about maybe 10% open. And the pressure is starting to climb, I think. And maybe not. Okay, we have to run both pumps, so we're running number two and number three stock pumps in parallel. The pressure has now come up to 305 kilopascals and I was in manual. So I'm now going to go to auto mode. And what it should do is it should open that valve up which I think is going up and uh, that will bring that pressure back down to 300 kPa. If we go over here, we've got a reasonably good flow. So this is the recirculation flow coming back in and that's about what I want. Before we were running into a problem with only one pump, the valve would throttle down so much the stock would get stuck behind it. So I'm quite pleased with this. Let's go back to the computer. So I said earlier that I wanted to get about 45 PSI and that's exactly what I got. The pointer's right on the black line. The next thing I'm going to do is to open up the supply into this first cleaner. See the rejects going out through there. Access to the coming into the tank.
man. You look in my, I can feel grit in there. And that's the rejects coming out. I'm now going to put a second one in. So this. So a few moments ago we were showing you this guy was blasting really hard because we hadn't opened up the access valve yet. So everything was going down. Uh, this guy is now plugged. Okay. So there's no rejects coming out of there. Keep them on fine. If you want to run your hand down through these, you can feel it's all gritty in there. Pretty hard to see it because it's very, very fine sand. Okay, so back to the operating screen. You can see that we're holding on dead on 300 kilopascals, which is what the set point was. Charles, go over the screen. The set point is sitting at 300 and uh, it's bouncing around 296. My valve is about a Almost a third of the budget, but we're doing my result, which is good. And what I wanted to see is up here my back pressure, my accept back pressure, 20 rounds, 66 kilopascals. So for posterity's sake, these are good values. This thing is running very well. Meters. So there's no calculations. It was just a matter of demonstration. And we actually, those of us who were here, went and felt underneath this the cleaner and you could actually feel the grit, uh, the sandy grit in your fingers from, the, from where the rejects are coming through. You can't really see it, but you can certainly feel it, because it is fine sand that has been drawn up through the uh, capillary action in the tree uh, as part of the nutrient. Um, so back to the screen overview for just a moment. We went through and we have a whole bunch of calculations that we did. And Charles, if you could sort of get a bit of a video of that. Um, initially, what we did was that in this area in here, we did consistency on the wash stock before it went to the, to the um, screen. And uh, it was just nothing more than doing a conventional consistency check. And finally, the consistency came out at 0 0.46, 0 0.409, and 0.498 which averaged out to an average consistency of 0.455. Now, the next thing that happened is that we ended up with rejects coming out of here. We're flushing with water and we were flushing out the rejects. Uh, we've had a lot of troubles over the years trying to get these rejects out of here. You could see it on the video that we went through in the reject uh, part. But the problem that we've got is that uh, it would always plug up on us. So we did a lot of extra cleaning up this year, just for this run, and we uh, we were running at 15 liters a minute in previous runs, and on this run I took it down to 14 liters a minute of flushing water to see what would happen. So when you look back at the calculations here, and Charles is going to give you back from back in on that, um, this is now the sample we took out, and we see what the what the beaker and slurry weight were and uh, then we took and we used a 10 cut flat screen which we took a video of and we all the stock that came through the rejects also was taken out of it and what we got at the end was just the real true debris the, the little chunks of wood and um, we then have dried it, and we're going to go upstairs and take a look and see what the actual weights come out at for the dried fiber. And so the next step is to go up to upstairs and take a weight measure. Okay, so we're upstairs in the lab, and I'm going to pull the samples out of here one at a time. Actually, I'll drag them all out. That was sample number one. Sample number two, and finally, sample number three. And if you look at these samples, you'll see that there was a fair amount of debris in the first one. In the second one, there wasn't a lot, and in the third one, there wasn't a lot. Um, that's why we're going to take a number of different samples. So I'm going to measure the weight of that one now. 
and uh, it's coming out at 1.0469. And so I wrote that value in here, that's my tray plus the debris weight. And the tray itself, I had uh, already recorded the weight and put it on the, I don't know what you can see underneath there, but on the underside of the tray I had written that weight in. So then we do the same thing with tray number two and tray number three. Uh, I've already wet measured them out just a few moments before we started to take this video, so it didn't take so much time. But the weights actually worked out to be 1.049 for that one that seems to have the big chunk in it. And then these guys came down at 1 point, or 0 0.9953 and 0 0.905, not 1.0095. But the actual tray itself, okay, was quite... Uh, it's 1.02 for number 1, 0.9905 and 0.1085. So the actual debris came out at 0 0.0236 grams. That's what that debris in there weighed. And the debris on this one is 0 0.0048 and 0 0.0009. The percentage of debris then works out to 0.587 and 1.5356. These guys all get averaged up. And then what we do is we now look at what is the consistency that went into the screen and what is the consistency that came out of the screen and so we can actually calculate how much fiber we got because we we did a consistency test and it's not shown on here we basically took an average of three samples you've seen it when we did it over on this side so now we've taken an average of three samples it came out at point three three nine four percent consistency in the accepts top tank there's 423 u.s gallons in there you multiply by the weight of water which is 8.334 pounds per u.s gallon and uh, that came out to that weight there based on the consistency 0 0.03394 times the weight of the uh, in in that number and that stock tank the accept stock tank came out to 11.9565 pounds of fiber before we went into the screen we had 13.63 pounds of fiber so obviously we lost some fiber as well and you could actually see it in the videos that you've seen or um, where in fact there was a lot of fiber sitting in there and uh, the rejects rate actually calculates out at 12.431 and it probably should be a lot less than that. Um, so in the previous test, and I don't know how well we can get this, we ran a test uh, last year in 2020 in January before COVID hit and uh, we came out at 13.668% reject rate. But we were running at 15 liters a minute. And that time I knew that uh, we were getting a lot of fiber coming across. And, but we were always getting plugging happening with the rejects coming out. This time I ran at a lower flow rate down at 14 liters per minute of flushing water. And uh, the debris never plugged at all. Everything ran well. I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that we had washed all the lines well and got rid of the big chunks and anything that was in there. And so the next time we run this test, I'm probably going to take this down to 10 liters per minute. By decreasing the amount of flushing water in there, I probably, which is already proven because I went from 13.668 down to 12.431 reject rate by just reducing the water flow. So if I reduce the water flow down to 10, I may be able to get that reject rate down even lower so that all we're really rejecting is the reject fiber rather than losing some of our good fiber. Okay, thank you.